Hello and welcome everybody on our project fair. It's the very, very first project fair at uh, our summer school. And uh, still we hope that we will make something good today here. So about the projects, uh, uh, shortly our motivation why we uh, skip uh, maybe uh, another 30 hours of lectures and practices and do this uh, wonderful part of our program. Uh, so one thing is uh, because we realized through these 10 years that uh, some skills cannot be acquired through just listening, writing, maybe some doing some practical labs. And uh, we really want you to get more from the school and uh, we believe that Project Work is a really nice thing uh, to do in that. Second thing is better learning. So uh, again, uh, if you uh, remember the phrases by Confucius, I think uh, that uh, show me and I forget, tell me, uh, explain me and I will know, and uh, let me do and I will understand. So we follow the same principle, we think that if you will have to do something by yourself, by your mind, by your hands, uh, you will uh, learn uh, the uh, area better. Third is the linkage with context. That is another very important thing that uh, we uh, uh, strongly believe that uh, only contextualized knowledge is really a rich one, and uh, knowledge without linking it to the real problems, uh, to the uh, real stakeholders, uh, doesn't uh, is not a full knowledge. So we hope that it will help to settle it also. Then it's external impact. We really want that our summer school is not just an event in itself, but that it has some uh, strikes out and spin-offs. And uh, with uh, setting this new format, we uh, try to also influence our external world. So we do hope that after this project work this year, some of the projects will become uh, some research papers or maybe collaboration in the projects. Some would become real initiatives. Some would become uh, just a very uh, useful model that you will go and implement in the new places where you will study and follow. Then it's feedback. For us it's also important that we know that you learn something from the summer schools for two weeks because sometimes we really don't know whether these guys will just sit in and nod into us two weeks or possibly they uh, really got this knowledge and skills. And the last but not the least it's fun. The best ones would be selected for the concluding presentations and summaries would be presented by the stream coordinators at the closing. So, project pitches, we have uh, 23 projects. Uh, please, uh, should we uh, prepare for the first speaker? So, hi everybody, my name is Dima and I'm, um, I would like to propose a project called Diabetic Retinopathy Detection. Uh, it's not so complicated as it looks. Uh, well, the, what is uh, retinopathy? It's a disease that a person has d develops when uh, he has or she has uh, diabetes. Uh, it's basically losing sight after a while. Uh, after a certain time, a period of time, and then people uh, badly losing their sight, and uh, that's what we are trying to, to fight here. We have uh, a lot of images of uh, retina. These are, these are eyes, right? Uh, different eyes. I hope that there is nobody fainting in the first rows. So uh, th these are different stages of the retinopathy. retinopathy. This is the worst case when the person is almost doesn't see anything, they're almost blind. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop an automated algorithm that will uh, take the uh, images as an input. There are quite many of them, uh, 36,000 training images and 53,000 test images. And what, they, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get through this algorithm and this algorithm has to tell us what are the uh, stages of the disease this, those images correspond to. And we are going to uh, basically solve this problem using convolutional neural networks. Uh, we're going we're gonna to construct a few of those and, and we're going to test them. And uh, that's how I, I, I thought we we're going to solve this problem. And um, uh, another thing, important thing is that this project is based on an uh, online course called uh, Convolutional Networks from Stanford. And uh, uh, usually, well, the, the full, full guidance of this project will be from there. So you will have to go through the f f few homeworks. You will have to use this data instead of their data. And you will use Python for 
uh, for constructing uh, networks and for testing the uh, algorithm. Um, yeah, the, the, so this is actually a Kaggle competition that just finished. Uh, there are already more than 700 teams that were participating, and we ended up being in uh, more than like 156, I guess, place out of 700, and we got our achievement 25 best, uh, 25 best percent of uh, the teams. We got some achievement, so I, I hope that this project will improve upon this result and we will get something cool uh, at the end of this. Thank you very much. So this project is about personal analytics and smart career planning and skill development. So the background is the following. So each of us is a portfolio of skills and what we can do really, uh, uh, we can, oops. So we can compute our lifetime earnings from, so we start, for instance, working at 25, so every month we get $2,000 salary, so we can compute the future value of how much we will earn through our life till, till we retire, like 60 years old. So, and if we compute those numbers, so of course, uh, those numbers will depend on the number of factors. It will depend on our profession, it will depend on our education, and so on, so, and we may uh, so that's essentially how much we cost. So we may cost at the end of the life half million dollars or two million dollars. And to really increase our value, so what we can do, we can develop our skills and make decisions. So at which program we would like to study, when we are going to uh, apply for a new job. So this is an interesting graph. So if you are uh, just uh, progressing uh, uh, in the career in the same company, that's uh, how much you will earn. But if you're changing job once in a while, so you'll be earning like 30% more if you're just changing the job. So all these questions, so which skills we can develop, uh, uh, which uh, uh, essentially program, educational programs we choose, which profession is interesting for us, we will try to build a portal uh, that will try to answer all those questions based on information from your social network, based on the information that you provide. So the questions that we will try to ask in this project, so how do we develop our skills to maximize our lifetime earnings? How many jobs for each profession would be in five, 10 years? Because if you're entering the university right now, you don't know how many jobs of that profession will be when you graduate from university. So we need to build the trends for the future professions. Uh, uh, which educational program to choose if you enter university? When should you really look for a new job? So every two years, every five years, or maybe tomorrow. Uh, can professions and experience from my LinkedIn contacts predict which profession is interesting for me? So can we just analyze our profile in the social networks and our connections and see uh, and, and get the information which job and future profession may be interesting for me? All this type of ideas we will try to test in this project and of course we will add your ideas so what are the suggested skills for the team uh, basic math and of course not necessarily all team members need to have all those skills so some of you may be more interested in math some of you may be interested in modeling business analytics some of more will uh, some of you will be writing the code in python and we will use the linkedin and python uh, facebook uh, linkedin and facebook python api so basics of web development skills, entrepreneurial and marketing skills, and their ultimate idea is try to make a startup out of it. So we would like to form a team that will be the startup, and that's some of the literature that you may that we may use in the project. So thank you. Okay, so in our project, which will appear soon on the screen, we would like to um, go for. Uh, creating a neural network that can play, learn to play Pong from reward and punishment. So why would we do such a thing that's only fun? So this is the background. Um, it's a view on our building on campus where the group is located, and this is a slug or a snail. Uh, on the campus we have a lot of different uh, animals, including humans with uh, different, more or less complicated nervous systems, and all of them, even this snail, is better than all the machines that we constructed so far in terms of being able to survive on their own from experience with the world. Uh, and basically, uh, this is the lack of understanding how learning and adaptation goes in biological systems. We uh, especially lack insight into this fundamental learning loop, sense, predict, adapt, sense, predict, adapt. We don't know how it goes. So how do we fix it? So we would like to study neural circuits. 
models of those that implement functional behavior. Uh, what does it mean? So functional behavior allows uh, an organism or a system to survive on its own just by experiencing the world and um, facing the good or bad um, uh, outcomes and adapting its behavior to go for good and avoid the bad, which is uh, a very universal principle that known since ages, but simply we don't know how it works neurally and we don't have an understanding of mathematical framework. Uh, the good news is that there is a mathematical, theoretical framework to describe how such learning should go, uh, what you have to do to adapt your behavior from experiencing bad and good things out there in the environment. You have algorithms, computations that uh, go for um, uh, maximizing reward and avoiding uh, punishment. Uh, but this is only one side. The other side is that we have to know a bit about neurophysiology, about the synaptic plasticity rules that could implement these algorithms and computations. So we're going to put these ideas in a, a spiking neural network uh, simulation that is able to execute actions and then adapt itself from facing different consequences in a number of simple tasks first, just going around here, avoiding punishment, getting rewards, seeing what happens in the network. Uh, what happens with synapses there. And then we go for more like um, funny parts like this arcade game Pong, uh, creating a neural network uh, from the previous insight we won on the simple task that is able to learn to control these pedals uh, just by experiencing the success and failures with the ball going around. Uh, if we are good enough, we can make a contest, Olympic Games, Olympic Pong Games, um, where the best controller would get something sweet. Um, and um, the requirements are very uh, modest, so you basically need your uh, brain that's working and uh, previous lectures that we will have on the topic. And then the next step is, of course, that we build machines that don't need us anymore and we can do th more thrilling things. Look at this board, guys, and you can do really more than just staring to robots on Mars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. So uh, we have some cultural uh, project uh, project uh, uh, that. Um, okay. So we have uh, a lot of beautiful places and cultural objects in Ukraine, but. Uh, time and people not so gently for them and that's why they disappeared but we have a solution for it and this solution is uh, to make a digital copies of these objects and uh, after that with uh, digital copies we can uh, make a lot of things like uh, like we can print them we can make some virtual words with them and um, else 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 so how we uh, can do this we can do this by usual phone or usual some kind of camera and uh, we will scan uh, so uh, we will uh, scan this guy and uh, make digital copy, copy of him uh, so uh, everyone at this project will learn how to uh, make uh, make scanning and make even a little bit virtual worlds uh, so and the, um, the great advantage of this project that uh, this project based on a uh, project of our friend Fedor Beitsov uh, he do this uh, around the year so he has a real experience of doing this and he will, ex uh, he will explain uh, for you how to do this and uh, mm, will help you if you have some questions join to us thank you and now we have one uh uh, presentation through the video. It's Mitro Karamshuk from London. Have you ever wondered how Facebook among billion of users can find just a bunch of those you may know? How Spotify and Last.fm create personalized radios from just what you want to listen next? How Amazon recommends you items you may actually fancy? Whether you did or not, in this course we will dive into the world of the internet recommendation systems and predicting user behavior online. We will analyze the state-of-the-art recommendation algorithms in a wide range of applications. Video recommendations for BBC, location recommendations for Foursquare, and image recommendation for Pinterest. We will then develop a recommendation algorithm uh, for the third biggest social network, Pinterest. We will use image features extracted with the state-of-the-art uh, convolutional neural network and formalize recommendation problem as a supervised learning task. 
This project is inspired by our recent research uh, results at King's College London, which were presented at the Top Tire Web Mining Conference, WWW 2015. So please join us and let's have some fun. So in uh, my project, you will uh, learn uh, how uh, uh, how, how uh, the space is uh, represented in the brain. Uh, th this uh, picture re represents a section through the hippocampus. Uh, this uh, brain area is uh, the main uh, storage place for the episodic memory, and uh, uh, in the same time, uh, it is the most uh, important uh, um, part of brain uh, for, uh, for the um, orientation and navigation in space. The studies uh, of the uh, cognitive uh, spatial maps in hippocampus is uh, a very hot uh, field of the experimental neuroscience. And uh, uh, this research uh, provides uh, a lot of uh, new and uh, non-trivial uh, uh, problems for computational neuroscience. Uh, th this line of research is uh, interesting and important uh, also uh, uh, because uh, the hippocampal uh, formation is uh, the one of the uh, very high level uh, cort cortices in the hierarchy of the uh, sensory brain areas. But uh, in the same time, a lot of signals uh, with a uh, simple and uh, uh, clear meaning uh, could be observed uh, here. In this project, we will, uh, uh, we will play with uh, uh, basic uh, models, uh, uh, neural network models of uh, cognitive uh, spatial maps. The problems uh, which we will touch include uh, how and why representation of space in walking animals differ from space representation in fly flying mammals, uh, how navigation in the darkness could uh, occur, and why a collision with the walls of environment could improve the, the precision of uh, self-localization, uh, how precise, uh, ar uh, precise orientation in a novel envi environment uh, could be achieved nearly uh, automatically uh, on the basis of a small number of uh, distant landmarks. Uh, how complex uh, neural networks, uh, uh, which integrate uh, sequences of uh, small uh, movements and uh, rotations, uh, could be formed uh, due to self-organization based on uh, simple synaptic plasticity. Thank you, Andrei. Please uh, come and ask more about the presentation. So, hi guys, my name is Sergei. I am a research engineer at Grammarly and I will be supervisor for this project which is called Multimodal Neural Language Models. So, automatically generation uh, descriptive caption of images uh, has long been regarded as a challenging task because one should understand language and descend, at the same time understand image. Uh, why is this task so challenging? Just because computer has no ability to see and to represent image just a bunch of matrices in the red, green, blue channels, and at the same time has no, uh, has no idea about language, and uh, every sentence looks like a gibberish. Okay, so the goal of this project is finding of mapping between raw image representation and the natural language sentences. In order to successfully work on this project, you should know uh, some basics of linear algebra, for example, matrix vector multiplication, some basics of probability theory, what probability distribution is, what cross, what cross entropy is, and uh, supervised machine learning, and of course, first order method optimization. Uh, so we will heavily use Python and uh, Tiano library, which I will cover in my lectures. And from the theoretical perspective, we will use convolutional neural network and uh, for making sense out of images and recurrent neural network for language generation. Uh, I also will cover all this stuff in my lectures. And basically you can find, unfortunately there is no internet, but you can find demo by this URL, just type it in your br browser. And uh, now I will show you some example. So yeah, as you can see, so this is the case when the model perfectly got what is going on in the picture. This is indeed a woman holding a tennis rocket on a tennis court, but sometimes it's, it fails in some, for some ex in some extent. For example, it, it thinks that this is a cat lying on top of a bed next to a book. 
So basically just confuse teddy bear with a cat. Sometimes it fails, al fails almost completely, like in this case. A close up of a man feeding a giraffe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because this method is heavily depends on, on a training set and there were a lot of giraffes there. So when model confused, they just hallucinating of giraffes. Yeah, so please join me and you will definitely gain some knowledge in the cutting edge uh, techniques in deep learning and at the same time you will be able to implement all this stuff by your own using Python and Tiana. So that's all, thank you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Anton and I'm lecturing in transportation planning here. I'd like to offer you a project about uh, some smaller scale thing in transportation planning, uh, planning uh, actually working with traffic lights. The problem is, uh, what I offer to you is a real project and it is a real, a real problem that needs to be solved. Let me explain. Uh, today in Kyiv, all the traffic signal information is collected on paper. So we just have more, lots of paper, lots of paper, and if we need some intelligent use transportation modeling, if we want to develop an uh, intelligent transportation system, we need to put it all from paper to the uh, digital uh, digital view. Uh, what I'd like to offer uh, to you is uh, to develop a system that will be available to store the information from the traffic lights, to input that information, edit it, and output in different views. For example, in graphical view, uh, in something like CSV, and so on. Uh, it is the first part. And the second part of the pro uh, project, if uh, we will manage fast with, it, with the first part, I will, would like you to try to make a genetic algorithm to make your own uh, traffic light optimization algorithm. S simple one, but you will try. And then we will compare this result to the result made by PTVV through professional software. And we will see how it works and what is the different, uh, difference. Of course, I will also show you uh, the work of the professional software in this field. And uh, what are the requirements? There are not much requirements here. I just would like uh, the students to know the basics of web development and the basics of database systems uh, to, d to develop the thing. Uh, and probably that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anton. Okay, my name is Anton. I'm from St. Petersburg, from Russia. And I propose you uh, quite a simple project. <coughs> Characteristics of spikes in uh, different neuron models, uh, namely exponential integrated and fire model, Hodgkin-Huxley model, and uh, EGKH model, as functions of uh, not only input uh, synaptic current, uh, but input conductance as well. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, brain uh, consists of uh, neurons. That's why to, uh, it is quite important to understand uh, single neurons. To understand means uh, to reproduce in models. Uh, it is important um, in order to understand bi uh, biophysical mechanisms of brain functioning and as well to develop um, uh, artificial brain um, inspired uh, intelligence. What um, I'm going to um, propose is to compare these uh, three models uh, with uh, experimental data um, from a real neuron. Um, and what is new in this project? Uh, new is that uh, usually um, People compare uh, neurons, uh, uh, neuron model with uh, experiments um, by stimulating uh, neurons uh, with uh, only current. Um, on the other hand, uh, as I will explain in my uh, lecture, um, uh, neuron as a black box or as a device receives, um, in good assumptions, uh, receives uh, two inputs. Uh, we can name the, uh, them uh, 
uh, input uh, current or total synaptic current and input conductance, total synaptic uh, conductance, no matter how many uh, synapses and how many uh, types of synapses uh, neuron has. And uh, our goal is to uh, compare um, the behavior of neuron if uh, two signals um, are received by the neuron. In particular, we will compare uh, these two dimensional functions of um, uh, pulse frequency uh, as a function of uh, two inputs, when inputs are constant. We will compare models and uh, s uh, sometimes uh, people claim that um, uh, simple models um, are um, uh, sufficient to describe uh, single neurons. Uh, we don't need uh, biophysically detailed ones. Uh, we will see if it's true. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Anton. My name is uh, Alexander. Uh, I'm a founder of um, uh, EarthQB. Uh, it's a new product development uh, bureau. For our customer, we make um, design, industrial design. It's like uh, ID design, make a mechanical design, uh, prototyping, uh, and uh, help them to run the uh, mass production. So uh, all points from your idea into real uh, product. And when we start to work with a um, uh, new uh, project, at first we make design research. Uh, we research some um, uh, issue how ca our, our product will uh, uh, looks. And the next, our designer make um, uh, sketches uh, for some uh, concepts. After that, our engineer uh, needs to make a 3D drawing and uh, we um, must make a prototype to check this idea. So um, I ask to check this uh, design and uh, make a 3D drawing and then uh, assemble it in, in the prototype and check it, uh, how it looks, uh, how we can feel it, uh, how it works, how we can uh, damage it, something like that. So that, it's uh, very um, easy, I think. Let's try to do it. That's all. Okay. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. You. <laughs> My name is Serge, and um, we're going to do a rather simple project. But we're, we're going to be, um, first we're going to play God, then we're going to play Newton. And then we're going to play practical and cynical engineers. What we're going to do is we're going to try and learn how we can uh, model a real mechanical system and then how we can experiment with that system under different conditions and learn um, what mathematics is missing compared to real life. So the systems that we're going to work with, um, we're going to work with um, simulation data. Uh, we, we will start with a simple uh, mechanical pendulum. So everybody knows this is a pretty simple equation. Then we will, I have some data with me uh, on satellite positioning, and I also have some data on uh, ABB RB140 manipulator that I, I have been working on my, and is my current research project. So what we will do is we will try and find if we can discover natural phenomena through using data analytics. So this is, for guys who are interested in data science, this is quite, um, quite a cool project. So w what we're going to do, we're going to, the, the phenomena uh, that we're going to be interested in, we're going to try and find uh, friction, we're going to try and find things uh, like distortion in uh, drive shafts and also like backlashes in the gearbox, wear and tear in uh, mechanical systems, um, problems with the engines, all sorts of things. Um, what we will be doing throughout the project is we will first we will do an experiment with a simple pendulum. Uh, we will uh, develop a model for a simple pendu pendulum in MATLAB. Uh, we will compare the experimental data with the simulation data and we will see what the difference is in between them. And what we will discover is that the difference, um, that um, the, the residuals between the comparison will be the data that we missed in our initial mo mathematical modeling stage. So for example, friction or distortion, distortion from a fan uh, in more complex systems, that could be all sorts of things. There could be waves on a ship, that could be um, uh, multipath reflection from the satellite data, it could be also um, jamming of the GPS signal, 
it's it's pretty great. So well, if we have the time, uh, as I said, I have uh, real ABB manipulated data, and I have also have a, a shipping satellite shipping satellite positioning data with me, so we can you know try and analyze that as well. What you will learn from this project is you will learn how to solve practical tasks. Um, we will learn how to model real physical systems. We will learn how to work with experimental data. We will learn how to use data analytics software. Um, we will discover unmodeled um, phenomena that were not taken to initial modeling stage. And we will d make better systems. And that's it. And I think this is a pretty cool project. Now it's the video from Australia. Hi, my name is Vincent Adam. I'm a PhD student in computational neuroscience at UCL in London. I'm going to be a tutor for projects for the remainder of this summer school. Uh, in the next few minutes, I will present you what are my field of expertise so that you know what we can do together if we work together. Uh, I will also make a few suggestions about projects that I think we could reasonably uh, do or implement during the time available, which is 15 hours. And I should say from now, that these projects are very flexible, so if you have any ideas of extension, modification, that's more than welcome. So about my field of uh, expertise, I do my PhD at the intersection of machine learning and computational neuroscience. I study perception, and machine learning both provide me theoretical tools to understand perception, for example, probabilistic inference, and it gives me, machine learning gives tool for signal processing or data analysis. Right now I'm in Melbourne, where I presented a seizure detection algorithm at an epilepsy conference. On the computational neuroscience side, uh, I use biophysical models of various neurons to constrain my models of perception, among other things. So during this summer school, I will be giving three classes all about pitch perception. What is pitch perception? And very briefly, this comic describes it well. So you have a sound, and then you have a percept. That is the pitch of this sound. And it is somehow related to the physical properties of, of the sound, but very indirectly. So you can study that by looking at behaviors, presenting sound, asking people what they hear. But then you can also dig into the brain and look at how the sound is encoded, at the, how the information propagates through the brain and how the brain might be actually extracting this quality of sound, which is pitch. Then you can do models of that. So biophysical models or more abstract models. Projects that I will be happy to supervise during this summer school actually um, cover these three types of um, approach. Psychophysics, so really be studying behavior in response to sound. Uh, neural modeling, so looking at how the brain actually works and trying to make models and, and see if we can explain the function from our models. And finally, a more abstract approach, which is, well, we have the task. We want to extract pitch. How could we do in an uh, optimal way, abstract way? So for pitch, the psychophysics of pitch, there are some quite robust and interesting illusions about pitch perception. For example, there is you can design sounds, sequence of sounds, for which the pitch seems to be going up forever, uh, which is not the case, because in the end, you make a, a circular sequence where you loop over the same sequence ever and ever, but you still perceive an infinite increase. So we could reproduce this um, effect and different effects actually related to the, the class of sound you need to, to do that. This would need this synthesizing sounds, running experiment, which is presenting the sound to people around you in the summer school and, and gathering data in a standardized way and then analyzing this data. This, there are quite interesting facts about this type of sound, and there are actually open questions that you could very well solve, actually, or give hints of answers during this project. Now, op getting into the brain, we have knowledge about 
how various stage of the processing of sound works and we could try to model them so to make a model from sound to actual spikes in the brain and then try to build a also biophysically relevant uh, pitch extraction from the spikes and then test how this pitch extraction works on various sounds and compare to how actually actually um, to what a human actually report their perception and finally a more machine learning project would be how to solve the task of multiple multi pitch tracking if i give you if two people are sp speaking together how can you extract the pitch of both of them together and how could you use various sorts of information for example if you know a speaker is a male and another is a female it has an influence on the statistics of the sound and can you if you know that in advance can can it help you to do the task so in this project we would um, do a bit of the math and try out one or two approach to, to this task and compare the performance assess and compare the performance so that's it for the proposed project I'd be happy to to supervise one, two, or three of them, because in the end you are going to be doing the the hard work. And um, sadly, I guess I don't have, I can't answer your question because I'm not here and I won't have time even if you send me mails. But this project could be very fun. I'd be happy to to supervise them, and I hope to see you soon at the summer school. Hello everyone, uh, I'd like to you to invite to the project called Air Solar Collector. As you will see on the screen, uh, you can see the external view of the solar collector built in Switzerland. It was built by Dr. Benoit Sicre and he will come to our school next week and with whom I was very happy to work with. But uh, so what uh, is a solar collector? The solar collector is a renewable techlo technology which allows to heat the air which flows through its surface. So we have a double effect. We have a ventilated room and heated room at the same time. So during the project, uh, we will make a numerical model of the collector based on differential equations. Then we make a 3D model of the collector using CAD systems. Uh, with the obtained results, we make a working example of air soil collector, uh, and then we will test it with experimental setup. And then we, using experimental data, we go back to the model. We collect the model, and uh, then we forecast the payback period and the annual performance of the coll collector. So the aim of the project, in idea, is that you can. Uh, you can build your own collector at your home uh, by using the materials from the average building supermarket. So we are looking for mechanical engineers who understand thermal and hydraulic processes. We are looking for IT engineers who can handle experimental and numerical data and no mathematical analysis. Also, we are looking for CAD engineers who can make 3D models and researchers who are interested in the compilation of experimental setup. So, see you in my team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrei. Uh, my name is Andrei and I uh, would like to give a brief outline of uh, the project which is uh, titled Harvesting Data from Video Surveillance Systems. And basically the motivation behind uh, this project is uh, that abundance of data gathered from uh, video surveillance systems are huge. Just by modern estimates, uh, the daily uh, these systems generate around hundreds of petabytes or even exabytes. And this is going to increase in the future even more. So, and uh, this uh, pose a challenges and basically we need to need to have the tools to process the data to save the, to save the data and finally and most important to get useful information out of this data and uh, in this project we will look at some data sets uh, from highway traffic and we will try to 
built a system which will classify uh, the video streams uh, uh, by three classes. The first is a light, uh, the medium, and the heavy. And to accomplish this project, we need tools from two domains. The first one is computer vision, and the second one is machine learning. And the combination of these two will give us a tools and mechanics to achieve uh, the goal. And basically, from computer vision, we will work with image and video data. We will transform, normalize uh, the data. And finally, and so this is actually from what we have from computer vision, is we will do feature extraction. And in the machine learning part, uh, we will uh, exercise actually what you have learned during this summer school. We will create a data set uh, and use it for classification problem. And uh, we will use tools like uh, OpenCV, uh, and it's actually a C++ library, but we will use Python binding of it, and from machine learning, Sky Kit Learn, and maybe we will also look for Tiano. So join me, and I think it will be fun. So thank you. Thank you very much, Andrei. My name is Bogdan, and I would like to present the project called uh, uh, Muscle Computer Interface for Near Rehabilitation Purposes. And uh, uh, there is a deal that there are more than 25 different uh, movement-related disorders uh, after Parkinson's disease, uh, heart uh, strokes, and others. And uh, uh, what we can do with this is uh, therapy. And uh, there are two basic principles uh, that are, are the line in the th uh, therapy techniques uh, is uh, first uh, that uh, visual uh, uh, sensory, uh, motor sensory, and uh, auto uh, sensory are collected in our uh, bodies. And uh, the, the second that uh, we can uh, um, imagine uh, some motor um, plants in our hand mental, mental and then uh, after repetition of the plants uh, we can uh, um, made uh, real activation of muscles in our limbs uh, and uh, uh, based on this uh, we can uh, 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 patients need a lot of practice uh, but uh, it can become boring and what we can do with this we can use gamification ap uh, approaches to make it uh, interesting and uh, um, but uh, they will use not a joystick uh, uh, as a controlling unit, but their gestures. And uh, unfortunately, during summer school, we don't have patients with real movement-related disorders. Uh, and uh, therefore, we will uh, test in ourselves. We will uh, uh, learn some new consequence of complex movements. And then we will um, um, to measure the EMG recording uh, during the learning. And uh, then we analyze it. and. Uh, find out uh, is there any change through learning or it remains st stable actually and uh, uh, in uh, our project is uh, uh, based on uh, three steps uh, first is image recording second is processing MATLAB and the third is controlling uh, during the first step you will learn how it is built digital and now electronics the second uh, signal processing pitfalls so MG specificity of the signal and um, processing techniques and the third is a musculoskeletal modeling in open scene uh, in order to uh, link uh, the physical uh, uh, actions in the virtual ones. Uh, thank you for attention. If you're interested, you can come and answer. We will answer. Thank you very much, Bogdan. OK, it works. Uh, so I present here three projects. They are all very simple compared to the ones presented before me. Uh, the first one is a little bit challenging. It's developing of a name identity recognition system for Ukrainian language. And the challenge, uh, so name identity recognition is uh, tagging and labeling uh, name identities in the uh, text, name identities are location, person, organization, and maybe some more, depending on what we want. And the, cha uh, the challenge is that actually there's very little uh, tools and data sets for the Ukrainian language. Uh, there is a project for building the Ukrainian corpus uh, of uh, texts, uh, one million world corpus. It's ongoing now, uh, but there's probably enough data to start experimenting. So uh, this is both a challenge and an opportunity, because the opportunity is to leverage some uh, semi-supervised and supervised techniques to enrich this data, to find uh, clever tricks to work with it. What you need to accomplish this project uh, is understanding of 
uh, how natural language processing works. You also need to uh, be able to just work with the data, uh, with this corpus and with other uh, sources potentially. And then uh, probably machine learning to implement this model, although you may come, come up with some other ideas. Yeah, that's probably all for this project. Thank you very much. Savot. Hello, everyone. I am Dori, supervisor of the Brain Computer Interface Project. Uh, you know, yesterday evening, I was wondering that I was already lying in the bed and I was too lazy to get up to switch off the lights. So I was thinking about how nice it would be if I, if I just thought on the concept of turning off the light and it would happen. It didn't happen, so I had to get up, but this is uh, probably possible in the near future. And of course, it, this kind of idea could be used for uh, more meaningful uh, projects as well. So what I'm talking about, uh, it's possible to turn our brain activity into some signals for controlling actual devices like TVs, phones, or opening doors. So we're going to work on a project where we have data from EEG recordings from various patients. And then with this data, we try to build uh, algorithms to control specific devices mentioned here. We're going to use these EEG recordings, especially the P300 signals, what we were studying about today with my stream. And then uh, by using some uh, machine learning algorithms and uh, classifications, uh, we try to distinguish between various signals which, which are corresponding to the various objects. So we will learn how to filter a signal, how to analyze, and how to load it. It's also sometimes a bit challenging and uh, then do some more advanced machine learning uh, algorithm. I uh, plan to supervise this project by using the R programming language, but of course, uh, if the, my team decides to use something else, it's also okay. So I think what you need is just uh, basic programming uh, skills and then it should work out with that. Thank you very much. My name is Sergei. Uh, I'd like to propose you project uh, 3D printing for heat pipe. Uh, I am planning this work, uh, combined work between uh, 3D printing stream and smart city stream. Uh, why is heat pipe? Uh, why is it important today? And uh, how heat, heat pipe work? Uh, heat pipe today is one of technology for different heat uh, transfer device, uh, different heat exchanger, for example, ventilation and conditioning system, domestic boilers, solar energy system, for cooling system, for example, uh, different electronic device as a laptop, desktop. Today, heat pipes usually use as uh, thermal stabilization system for space satellite. Uh, but heat pipe have a big problem. This problem is connected, uh, first of all, with technology of heat pipe. Uh, certainly, technology of heat pipes is very complicated, and uh, heat pipe are very expensive uh, system. For example, for market of passive house, uh, energy efficiency house, and uh, smart house. What can we do during this project? First of all, student uh, will study about heat pipe, for example, how heat pipe work. After that, student will uh, design heat pipe uh, and make a case of heat pipe by 3D printing technology. After that, uh, student will production prototype and testing it and compare uh, its parameters with usual aluminum profile heat pipe. And uh, I think uh, it will be a new way for heat pipe production. And who want to understand, uh, is it possible to use heat pipe for uh, use 3D printed technology for heat pipe production? You are welcome. Thank you very much, Sergey. 
Uh, okay, so this is the second project uh, from the NLP section, normalizing noisy text. Unlike the previous one, uh, this is based on a well-prepared and re ready-made data set. Uh, this is actually uh, there was a shared task uh, in the academic community this year that finished just maybe a couple of weeks ago uh, on this uh, on this task. Uh, so the project goal is to normalize uh, text and user generated content. The, uh, uh, the training data is extracted from Twitter, and the idea is to make it. Um, to make this data more suitable for uh, further processing with uh, conventional tools that are not very well suited to work with all these uh, abbreviations, uh, jargon, slang, and so on that is used in uh, user in social media. Um, yeah, so these are examples of the texts that should be normalized, and there is a more detailed description on the project page. So uh, the interesting part uh, about this project is that this is a shared task, so there were a number of uh, teams participating in it. We have already uh, the winner, and the result of the winner is uh, quite high. And so they got 84% uh, of score. Uh, so if uh, we really want to, to do this project well, we need to beat this, <laughs> or try to do that. Uh, but at the same time, this is uh, a rather uh, small and arguably simple project. Uh, you won't have to do uh, to be exposed to the whole NLP pipeline. The data is more or less there. You just need to uh, devise some algorithms or approaches to that. The project is probably the same as before. Uh, minus working as text corporate may not be even needed here. Yeah, that's, uh, the, and the other thing is that this project is for obviously for English language, and like the previous, which is for Ukrainian, but Ukrainian uh, one uh, is also suitable for work for non-native speakers. I think it would be interesting for them. That's all. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is uh, to me very a very exciting project. The the logo even is exciting. So the, we're calling the project Belka, and Belka is the the sort of unofficial logo for KPI, and this is a very appropriate logo for the project because the project is a grassroots project. It's a project that was conceived by students here at KPI, and it's been students working on the project since November of 2014. The vision is to turn this room <laughs> into this room. So the idea is to to convert an old library space into a smart co-working space that's going to have modular furniture that will be a space where students can work together, where there can be lectures, where there can be workshops. And the idea is to apply the principles that we've been learning in the smart city stream into this project. So we're going to do two components. We're going to do a, a mechanical design component looking at designing uh, occupant comfort features uh, for the space. And then we're also going to do a, a component that's more around communications, more around actually making the project happen. So on the mechanical side, uh, Kyle McDonald, who's my colleague from Winnipeg, if you can raise your hand, Kyle. Kyle's going to be supervising the mechanical component where we'll be looking at occupant comfort around heating, maybe some windows, and designing a few different schematics for what the mechanical heating, windows, lighting, electrical systems might look like. And on the PR side, this project requires fundraising. It's going to require agreement from, P from KPI. There's going to have to be processes in place to make sure that the space can be used uh, for, for years, even after the students who came up with the project graduate. So we'll be working on all of those more conceptual issues, fundraising issues, communication issues. So there'll be two options for the project, working on the mechanical and working on the communication. And we think it's going to be very fun. The exciting part here is then what we have at KPI once this project is complete is an example of what students can make happen when they work together and have a goal and decide to take their technical knowledge and their human knowledge and to create a very real project that's going to be continuing and have very interesting work happening in, in, to, in it for years to come. Thank you very much. I think it is the most brightest version of the presentation for this project so far. Okay, so the last project for me is uh, identifying and uh, analyzing significant words and trends in the Ukrainian media. But the idea is very simple, uh, to analyze the corpus of Ukrainian news for 2014 
and uh, find there some words which are uh, which are an anomaly. They're used very, very often, and so on. And maybe not even words. So you can go through this. This project is the most like unclear and vague part. It's more of an exploratory project. There is no well-defined like measure of success for this project. You cannot compare it to anything uh, else. Neither in uh, like some other language or in Ukrainian language. Uh, so the, uh, what we need to do is just analyze, uh, visualize, maybe uh, after this initial analysis, I come up with ideas what to do next, maybe analyze some relationships between entities and so on, uh, which is dependent on the project with uh, Ukrainian uh, name entity recognition. Uh, and so this is uh, like more of an interdisciplinary project. It involves not only NLP, uh, but also visualization, maybe ne social network or network analysis, if that would be applicable here. Yeah, so that is, uh, prerequisites are basically the same as before. Thanks. Thank you very much, Sarod. My project is about satellite uh, data based service for fire monitoring web service. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, as you know, there are thousands of satellites that are spinning all around our Earth, and uh, uh, the main satellite is taking images of our Earth and obtaining data in um, uh, visual data or, uh, as example, in infrared temperature data. Uh, and uh, we will take data from two of these satellites that have infrared thermal sensors and base it on this data, we will determine pl uh, places of fire, as example, uh, large forest fire or other fires on the Earth, on all Earth's surface. And uh, our project will contain of so, uh, three parts. Uh, first part would be about data obtaining and processing. Uh, it means that we would take this raw data from satellite and uh, process this data uh, using Python and uh, GDAL library. Uh, it, uh, it's very powerful. It we would uh, make many manipulations for this raw data to find uh, places of fire based on temperature data from satellite. Okay, uh, it uh, really could sound very complicated, but it's not so complicated. Uh, we could do it. Okay, a uh, second part of this service would be cloud backend, where all this processed data will be stored uh, and to use it uh, to present this data to front-end uh, web service and so some API, so other services can also access our data. Okay, and we would use uh, some technologies like Python, Flask, uh, Framework, Database, PostgreSQL, and uh, Spatial extensions. And third part, it's a visualization of data. It's a front-end part of our service, uh, so users can open browser, uh, type www, some name, and open your service and uh, watch this data. Uh, we would use usual stack of web technologies, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, you may be uh, famous with some of them. And for data visualization, we would use Leaflet library. It's a really open source, a really nice and powerful library for visual visualized spatial data. It's used by GitHub, Facebook, and really uh, other famous companies. And it allows uh, and uh, you will know how to create this kind of really great spatial data visualizations. Okay, uh, so uh, in this project you will really touch a bunch of interesting technologies. It's satellite, it's data at processing, it's clouds, it's Python, uh, so you will really get something interesting for you. So uh, you can apply to my project and I will be happy with this. Thanks, Guy, and now I'm the last, so... Thank you very much, Alexei. And with that, we finish this uh, part of our...